I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on limb here, and I'm gonna go so far as to say that you are a fucking monster. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because you choked that girl out, shoved her head into that bathtub until she drowned. Then you politely and quietly grabbed your sh and you fled the scene. And then you sit here and cry crocodile tears about doing it. This is 36-year-old Brandon Garrett. On the morning of May 1st, 2019, his wife Jessica Sullivan was found dead in her bathtub from what appeared to be strangulation and drowning. Three days prior to her death, Jessica called her sister and told her that she had made Brandon move out after he broke down their apartment door and strangled her. Brandon claimed he didn't remember doing it, but he left anyways and began staying with a friend from work. When Jessica didn't appear for her shift at work, the police were called and a welfare check was done on her home. After they found Jessica's body, the police asked Brandon to come in and give his statement. And when I woke up this morning, I, actually, I just remember waking up like around early, like three, and I just felt this cold feeling in my body. And I just texted her, like, are you okay? Uh, what's going on? And I got no response. I got no responses. I've been texting her all day. I've been calling her. Um, I know her, so instead of me, I stopped messaging. I stopped calling her. So I was like, well, let me just check and see if she's at work. So I called uh, Fletcher and Noel, said she wasn't there. Called uh, Fletcher and Noel, she works at the, at, she worked at the Olive Garden right here in Alvin. Okay. Well, she's a to-go specialist. I, I talked to them on the phone. And, and when, when did you talk to them on the phone? Uh, this morning, like early, like after it was, but she has to be there at nine. Mm -hmm. But I remember, I think the first phone call around there was like around 10 because I checked the see if she didn't work. When they told me that she wasn't there, they were just like, yeah, that's not like her. She was, she does not show up. So my second option was, okay, I know that we had discussion about the kids being having a perfect attendance at school. So I called the school to see if the, the kids went to school. When they told me the kids weren't in school, I knew something was wrong. Um, I was calling her mom. Her mom was like, just give her time. Just give her time. So I'm just like, I don't know. But, and then this afternoon, I finally sucked it up. I was like, you know what? If, I just hope her car's gone. Because if her car's gone, it means she's not home. I mean, if she didn't do what I think she did. So I called Ashley in the office. Well, I, just, I just called the front office, but Ashley answered the phone. And I said, can you do me a favor? Can you please go check? to see if my wife's car is in the parking spot at 1502. But she said, okay. And then I think that's when you called me back. Okay. So the last time that you spoke to her on the phone was? The last time I spoke to her on the phone was, um, what is today? It was, Tuesday, it was Tuesday. Tuesday evening. It had to have been like around I don't remember exactly what time it was, but she asked me to FaceTime her, and then she FaceTimed me. And where were you at? What, I was in uh, in the trade in the apartment, the trade went to put a blueprint. <clears throat> Brandon tells the detectives that he's been staying with a co-worker since his fight with his wife three days prior. Earlier that day, before the body was discovered, Brandon claims that he was going to admit himself to get help for his bipolar and manic depressive disorder. Before going in, he called Jessica to tell her what he was doing, and when she didn't answer, he began to worry. Today, you were, you were trying to get a hold of her all day. You started calling the school, calling the apartment complex, calling her mom. If if you thought something was wrong, why didn't you drive to Alvin to, to check on her? Because the last time I saw her in person, she was afraid. I didn't want to see that. Right. I was just afraid. I was. I didn't want to make my situation that I like do with this more. I didn't want to make it worse. So I was just trying to get other people to go over there, like, and not me myself personally. I'll talk to them at work. I try to get them to send coworkers over to the house or something like that, but I've been, I've been calling other people to do it. Her mom was answering the phone. I assumed that her mom was, because her mom's a professor at uh, 
U of H, clearly. So I figured she was in meetings on class issue. That's why she stopped answering. Or she didn't reply to me. You figured she was what? She was in classes <coughs> or meeting. And so I mean that's the reason why that's why I didn't that's why I didn't come down here because I've been in a situation before which made it which would make it worse. Even if I didn't do anything at the particular point in time, I just didn't want to make the situation worse. She's all she was already feeling I, I understand that. Um but when you called the school and figured out the kids weren't there, which is, uh, you know, by your own words, not not a normal thing. Right. They had I, attendance. I thought but, that she took off and left. That's what that was in my mind. I didn't. But, but still, I'm trying to I'm trying to wrap my mind around why you wouldn't. Because regardless of how she felt, you, know, you want to check on your kids. Because I know if I was in that situation and my wife was mad at me and you know we had just gotten into a disagreement and she didn't want to see me. She ain't gonna keep me from my kids. She's not gonna keep me from checking on my kids. That, well, that's not not gonna happen. Her her words as far as the girls, because the girls aren't allowed to do mine. Uh, I'll say to my girl, but she was like, we'll get into it, and she'll end up taking it back. But she will always say, those really like aren't. At the end of the day, they're not your kids; they're mine. So if I wanted to do something and take them, you have no you know, say something right. You have no legal. Uh, guardianship of them, even though we're married, we don't. They right. have fathers. So. I, I understand that too. I have stu- I have two stepchildren. I realize at the end of the day, my, my wife can basically do whatever she wants. Mm-hmm. But I love those kids exactly. as well. Exactly. So if something if something was going on in my mind where I thought something may, may be wrong, regardless of her feelings about whether I was their father or not, or or you know what role I played in their life, because I love those kids, I still check out. And that's why I was calling the school and, and trying right. to see if they were at school or what have you. That's why I was calling. But the reason I did not come to Alvin is because I did not want to see Say, for instance, she was at the house and I show up and now the girls are there. Like, I didn't want her to be scared and acting like that in front of the girls. So I was. that's why I didn't come. Like, I was thinking about them. That's why I didn't come. <clears throat> What do you think happened to her? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I asked, I thought the other detective was the one that took my phone and everything. I thought he was the, I thought he was you. Um, I didn't, I couldn't recognize the voice. And now I'm listening to your voice. It's the same, but. I have to move out. Am I going to be able to see her? <coughs> Are you going to be able to see her? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I want to just to see my wife. Um, man, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that you're going to be able to or not. I, I don't know that. Besides the fact that Brandon has shown little emotion after finding out his wife was dead, he hasn't asked how she died. When they told him to come in for questioning, he was only told that she was dead and nothing more. The detective is about to tell him how they found his wife's body. Well, she was, she was found face, to, face down in a full bathtub. That's how she was found. She didn't just fall in that bathtub. She didn't put herself down in that bathtub. I don't know where. 
to her. I don't know a lot of her friends. She didn't do it to herself. Those two little kids in that apartment didn't do it to her. Brandon spends the next 30 minutes looking at the ground while the detective explains that he needs to be honest. At one point, Brandon says that he knew about a man that had been trying to date Jessica, but she turned him down and maybe he could be the killer. The detectives immediately shoot down this idea and continue to accuse Brandon of being the murderer. So that's what you're going to stick with? Let me recap it for you. You stayed with a friend last night. Last time you saw her was Monday. You called everybody but her. To check on her. That part not true. Not never, not true. never came to town to check on her. Yet you were so worried about her. And when the police finally called you, told you that she had died. You just drive around in circles instead of coming to talk to us. That's what that's what you're going with. That's what you that's what you want to go with. Without his confession, the detectives were forced to let him go and continue their investigation. Brandon's phone record showed that his phone had been near Jessica's apartment on the night of the murder. With more evidence against Brandon, the police brought him in again, and he was interviewed by two different detectives. Uh, let me let me just tell you this. I, I, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry that you found yourself in this position. 
I don't I I can't go so far to say that you're a victim of circumstances but I wish that we weren't here I wish you weren't here I wish that Jennifer was uh, uh, Jessica was still alive that that's how I truly feel about all of this but unfortunately I got to be involved and we got to be involved just by the nature of what's taking place <clears throat> we've got the we've got the our job is to do a couple things and one of them is find out what happened and uh, if we already know what happened then we got to find out why it happened you know and how it happened and a lot of times if we know what happened we know how it happened but sometimes the hardest part is finding out why it happened you know if uh, for example and I'm gonna give you a scenario here if uh, a guy breaks into a store and he steals steals a bunch of cigarettes cartons and cartons of cigarettes and then he gets arrested as he's coming out of the store okay as far as anybody's concerned we got a burglar guy came in he stole a bunch of cigarettes we caught him in the act but what we don't know is why and everybody's gonna say why you need money to buy dope but that's not necessarily all the all the all the reasons that people steal do burglaries I've been doing this long enough I know a lot about it sometimes people are trying to pay for things Sometimes people don't want to get evicted. Sometimes people don't want to lose their cars. Sometimes people want to put food on the table for their families. And they get so desperate because they can't find work or they can't get work or they can't find any other ways to, of means to money. So they steal stuff. So they can sell it or pawn it or whatever, get that money. So there's always another side to the story. There's always another reason that things do what they do. People do what they do or the reason things happen the way they happen. <clears throat> I personally think that if there's a judge or a jury or there's other people making judgments, that they need to know the whole story. Okay, so you telling me everything that happened Sunday is, is getting us almost there as far as what happened Sunday. Uh, in those regards. Yeah, totally well. But, but... Uh, it's, it's not complete okay uh, I know enough about bipolar I know enough about uh, uh, depression that we we really don't black out we don't really fly in a rage people use that expression a lot and when they use that expression it doesn't really mean what, what people interpret it to mean okay sometimes when people black out they basically mean that they did something, they were aware they did it, they just didn't have any control over themselves. So they use the expression blacked out. And so when you sit here and tell me that you blacked out, I've got to I've got to take that with a grain of salt. You know what I'm saying? I can't I can't I don't know, for lack of a better term, I can't accept that explanation. You see what I'm saying? You, you don't have to answer to me, but you know eventually you're going to have to answer to a couple of people. One of them might be a judge, one of them might be a jury of 12 people, but the other one's definitely God. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Do you believe in God? Yes, sir. I do too. So we know sometime in our life, above anybody and beyond anything else in this world, that's one of the people we're going to have to answer to. But the first immediate thing is going to be a judge or a jury. And there's enough experts out there that know a lot more about this kind of stuff than I do that are not going to accept the expression or the explanation of blacking out. Now, if you did something, you had no control over your emotions, that's understandable. But to say that you don't remember any of it, that's, nobody's going to buy into that. Well, that, but that particular part, I'm not omitting that. That's what basically got us... I mean that's what the, the warrant and stuff was for. Right, right. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I know you're not denying it happened, but to say that you blacked out and you don't remember anything at that's that is not the truth. Well, I don't. I don't remember exactly. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm I'm trying to explain to you that that's that's not the truth, and you know it's not the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God, and you know that I know that it's not the whole truth. You see what I'm saying? The detective is referring to the act of domestic violence that took place prior to Jessica's death. Brandon claims that because of his mental health issues, he doesn't remember attacking his wife. 
The detective is hoping that if he can get Brandon to admit he remembers, he will be one step closer to getting him to confess to the murder as well. Well, let me let me give you some help real quick, okay? There's no way she could have known that you shouldered the door. But she said she was looking at the blinds when I, when I was doing it. There's no way she could have seen that you shouldered the door, okay? My shoulder hurts, so... Well, that's, on, that's the only person who knows the shoulder hurts you, right? So tell me what happened that, in your words, not in hers. So how were you choking her that day? Just with my hand, we tripped over the hot. Where, where is her neck in, in relation to where you are? Well, Man, no. she's so much shorter than you. Well, she was five, she's telling me, five, where would your hands be right now if they were when you were choking her? Like here. About that level. Yes. Okay. So how did you hold her neck? Just like this. With your thumbs in the in that like where the. So at some point she said, babe, and then you snapped out of it. I don't, I don't believe it for a long time. Um, I tripped, we tripped over the, that's how we fell. So we tripped over the ottoman and that's, I fell on top of her. And she said, babe, and that's when I stopped. And then I just backed up and I was just in disbelief for what just happened. And Did she tell you she couldn't breathe? She said afterwards, she just said, I couldn't breathe. Yeah. Yeah, she, not during, but afterwards right. she said I couldn't breathe. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. And she was like, just let me just go to my mom so everything cooled down. And that's when she was like, I'm sorry I, I did that. As far as, you know, saying things, well, you, which, that's no excuse. I never say it as an excuse. I mean, words hurt, but... Now that they have Brandon admitting that he remembered attacking Jessica, it's time to move on to the murder itself. The detectives begin with the usual, we already know you did it, we just want to know why. I'll give you for instance, let's say, and I'm no disrespect to Jessica, but let's say you go to a bar, and I'm just making this up, and, and, and you walk into a bar and you see a guy snuggling up next to Jessica, okay? And you get pissed and you walk out, you don't confront. You get home, and you're like, babe, where were you at? And Jessica's like, I was at work. No, no, you're home late, I worked late. Y'all are gonna have some issues, right? Now let's say you could confront her, same scenario. But she says, babe, I had a death day at work. I went and gave me a couple drinks. There was some ass at the bar who was snuggling next, next to me. I pushed him away, I said, get away. We had some few drinks. You're probably, she told you the truth. You're probably gonna be okay, right? Same thing with the court system. People are people. Judge, jury, DA's office on why something was done and why people lie. I've seen some good people, tens of thousands of people I've talked to over the years that are good people that sit in that same chair, but they lie. And they lie because they think they need to. That person that may be a good person now looks like this monster, right? There's going to be some issues kind of like with you and Jessica because she lied about the bar thing. As opposed to the good person saying, this, is, this was it. I made this mistake because of this mental health breakdown I had or because or because of something this person did she came at me with a knife she came at me I don't know I'm you know I can't always put together why I can put together what but it does make a difference on why people do stuff there's no question here about what happened at all it's just the why I can't ever get inside Brandon's head and say why something happened you're the person that has to say that we all want to believe that there's good in people. No one wants to believe, like Detective White said, that there are monsters in the world. So if you're a monster, you're a monster. If you're not a monster, you need to tell us that you're not a monster. I believe you. I believe you 100% when you tell me that. I believe that your mental illness your lack of being on your medication, the emotions, the fact that you were going to lose a wife and maybe a family again.
One of the detectives shows Brandon pictures of his license plate from the surveillance footage taken near Jessica's apartment. When Brandon sees these pictures, his story changes to, I just went over there to grab a bag, and then I left. So you're telling me, let me get this straight, because this is what a, a quarter of the jury would hear. You're telling me that there was no screaming match. You're telling me that there was no argument. So you, what you're telling me is you snuck in there and killed her. What you're telling me is you snuck in there and killed her like a serial killer would. You're not telling me you did it out of sudden passion, which is a defense. You didn't do it out of sudden passion. You didn't do it out of anger. You did it because you're evil. That's what you're telling me. Because there's no doubt what you did. So you're not, you're, you're, you're not, you did, there was no sudden passion. There was no, can I tell you this? He's seen, he has seen me angry. We've worked a lot of stuff over the years and we're pretty close. And he has seen me lose it and be, do something in sudden passion. Everyone does, is my point. I have, he has. Everyone can get angry, not to that point, but everyone can get angry, including you. People can understand someone that loses it in anger. People can't understand someone that sneaks in and kills someone while they're sleeping. I don't believe he did that. No. I don't either. I don't either. And that's but what that's, I'm trying to get you from that's all we got to, That's the only thing that we can present at this moment. Because you're... I don't believe that. You're not even telling us. I don't believe you're that evil. I don't. <laughs> but... Because you you know what? Let me tell you something. The district attorney of Missouri County is a woman. And whenever there's a female victim involved, she is a strict dad. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's how you're going to be presented as an evil person. Well, I don't believe you are. Detective White doesn't believe you are. But you're telling us that's what happened. Was this on purpose or was it accidental? Just give me that much. Was it on purpose or accidental? Brandon, was it on purpose or accidental? Brandon, don't hide behind your hands. Was it on purpose or accidental? Brandon, was it on purpose or accidental? You know, it makes all the difference in the world, don't you? Brandon, was it on purpose or accidental? You all right? Brandon. Was it on purpose or accidental? She told me to. I can't hear you. She told you to. <laughs> Who told you to? <laughs> Brandon, look at me for a second. Brandon, look at me. Brandon. <laughs> Tell me, answer this. She told Was it on purpose or accidental? <laughs> Was it on purpose or accidental? She said she didn't want to live anymore. She said huh? she didn't want you anymore? Yeah, she didn't want to live anymore. She didn't want to live anymore. She just didn't want to live anymore until he killed a girl that she didn't need to live no more. You said she wanted you to, she wanted you to kill her? <laughs> you said her family disowned her. <laughs> You said a family disowned her? She said that's all she had. Was a family of me. Was it intentional or was it accidental? It was accidental, I didn't. So how did it happen accidentally? I guess she I guess she was from the injury prior on Monday. My Sunday night, excuse me. Sunday night it was She pressed her hands against mine. 
I mean, her neck against my hand. On Tuesday? She pressed her neck against your hands on Tuesday? Tell me, tell me what happened then. Let's go back to when you opened, you walked in the door. Tell me what happened. I walked in the door. And we was speaking and she was crying. You walked in the door and what? I couldn't hear you say it. She was crying. Sit, please sit up. She was crying. crying. And yeah. okay. And then what happened? Crying and she, she kept saying repeatedly, she didn't want to live no more. And she was family. saying she didn't want to live anymore? She kept saying her family disowned us. We were going to disown her. She took me back and she said she loved me. And she like, I've done everything for her. So what happened? She was sitting by the restroom. I was standing in this room, but I was sitting beside the bed, on my side of the bed, talking to her. And my side of the bed is the, the side with the, the big uh, nightstand. I don't know if you were in there. Uh, if you're looking at the bed, the left side of the bed, on mm -hmm. my side. Yeah. And I was sitting on that side, and we were talking. And she was saying she don't want to lose me, she said, but she just doesn't want to live anymore. And I was like, what do you mean you don't want to live anymore? And she walked over, picked my hand up, and walked me to where the restroom, and it was already water in the bathtub. And I was like, I'm thinking she would take it back. She was like, no. You were thinking what? I was, I mean, it was water in the bathtub, so I was like thinking, she doesn't take a bath, and I was weird when she takes showers. I felt like that was weird already, so. And I was like, well, what's going on, what's going on? And she put, she looked in the mirror, and I just to look at her face. She was crying, like, I've never seen her cry so hard and so much, but she put her my hand on her neck. And she said, I don't want to live anymore, and she started squeezing. And she was she started squeezing what? She started squeezing my hand. Mm -hmm. Like, I, she, at first they were just sitting here like that. Because uh -huh. I was trying to snap it down. She was like, no, and I didn't want to snap. She said, don't. And I put my hands up. And she said, she just started squeezing my hand. She said, do it. And she stood there. And she said, do it. And she said, finish what you started because I can't live anymore. How long did you squeeze her neck? Not long at all. What, what would be your guess? Probably not even a minute. So what happened then? Well, she kind of like fainted and fell in the tub. And then what happened? And then, I don't have to, like she didn't move. It's like she was already gone. And it wasn't even that long. So then what happened? So I, just, I just left the apartment. She told me to do it. I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't do it long enough for it to happen. I don't think I did. You want a glass of water or something? Mm -hmm. Can you do me a favor? Can you want to eat? Can you show me on this box how hard you squeezed your neck? Just squeeze it. I don't care if you crush the box. I don't care if you crush it. Show me how hard you squeeze it. Probably like that much. That's that. You can crush that box as much as you want. I don't care. The problem like this, but I felt that I think she already had a bruise from when I first did it, and I, I think Sunday. I think I hit that bruise or whatever or did something because I felt like this real low. Like it's was it just like that? Is that yeah. how you're doing it? Yeah. That, that, is that as hard as you squeeze? Okay. Right. We're gonna get you right now. Yes, you heard that correctly. A mother of two children told the man that recently assaulted her that she didn't want to live anymore because she couldn't be with him. She then takes that man into the bathroom and demands he take her life. Of all the possible scenarios a killer can come up with, this has to be the dumbest. The detectives are just as shocked as you are, so they leave the room to go over the next set of questions. So let me ask you something with that being said. When she stopped breathing and fell into the bathtub, why did you leave? I just remember her saying she didn't want the girls to know I was there. And it just... Wait a minute, what was that? You left because... I remember her saying that she didn't want the girls to know that I was there. Uh -huh. And I didn't want the girls to be scared of to automatically, you know, know that I was there and it happened. I didn't want the girls to... So she stopped breathing and fell in the tub. And you snuck out because of the kids. Are you listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth? 
Does that make any sense to you? It sounds stupid, but that's what was going to my mind. I think the word I would use is preposterous. Because if I loved a woman, like you say you loved her, which I do, and even in a fight or something, and she stopped breathing, I could care less if I got arrested. I would be there to try to save her life. I would at the very least call 911 if I had no clue what to do. I would try CPR, I would try mouth to mouth, I would get her out of that tub, I'd pull her out on the ground. But you didn't do any of that. You didn't do one little thing once she stopped breathing except dropped her into the tub. You know what I think? I think you pinned her in the tub and you choked her and she sucked in some water and she drowned. Because you know what we got from the autopsy? You want to know what we got from the autopsy? One of the things we got from the autopsy is she has water in her lungs. You know what that means? That means she was alive when her head went underwater. She was alive and breathing, making an effort when her head went underwater. So you're story about her pressing her hands your hands to her throat and then passing out and falling into the tub doesn't hold water it doesn't cut it and I bet you I can find a 15 year old high school student that could hear that story and tell you the same thing so we're we're going to step back to where we were a minute ago and ask you are you somebody that's sick or are you a monster and at this point based on what you're telling me I believe you're a monster I believe my perception of you up to this point has been incorrect because if I hit my wife the woman that I love the one the woman that's brought children, my children in this world and she fell head first into the bathtub as soon as I got her out of that tub and start a CPR, I'd be dialing that phone, calling 911. Get me a damn ambulance over here. Somebody help me. Somebody call 911. She cannot die. I cannot let her die. But you did. You let her fall in that tub. You held her head down underwater until she drowned and suffocated. And then you snuck out of the house so the girls wouldn't know you were there. The problem is, people know you were there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out and live here, and I'm gonna go so far as to say that you are a fucking monster. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because you choked that girl out, shoved her head into that bathtub until she drowned. Then you politely and quietly grabbed your shit and you fled the scene. And then you sit here and cry crocodile tears about doing it because she told you to do it not only did she tell you to do it she made you do it she grabbed those big six foot what are we are 300 and whatever pounds you are and pressed your hands around her throat until she suffocated until she strangled to death and fell in that tub and drowned you know what crocodile tears are that's like the absence of tears Grief, you can't fake it. You sit here and crawl, oh, and not a damn tear came out of your face. You can't even be honest right now in this room and accept responsibility for what you did. You're going to sit there and lie ball face to two men that have a combined time in law enforcement of 62 years and try to convince us this little girl choked herself out with your hands and then fell in that bathtub and drowned. I didn't think she choked herself out with my hands. Huh? I didn't say she choked herself out. I didn't think she did. You're saying she pressed her hands in and then she just blacked out. She fainted and she fell in the tub. But she fell in the tub. You know what was in the bottom of that tub under her head? Blood. Blood. You know why there was blood? Because her face was hitting the bottom of that tub. 
Yeah. No. That that's evidence, dude. I got pictures of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what You happened. might not be aware of it. That is what happened. That's not what happened, sir. Dude, don't sit here and tell me she fainted and fell in that bathtub. That's not what happened. And drowned. That's not what happened, sir. Then tell me what happened. Because it ain't what you told me a minute ago. That's that's what happened. That's not what happened. What I, what that's not what happened. happened. Just stop. Just stop. Brandon, you know that's not what happened. And you know you have not convinced us. You know what? I'm going to cut Detective White out because he's a nice guy. He wants to give you the benefit of the doubt. But I am, I am beyond that at this point. You're a cold-blooded killer. You choked that girl out, held her head underwater until she drowned and strangled. And then you left the house real quietly. You were so concerned about your own ass that you couldn't even call 911? That you couldn't try to resuscitate her? That you couldn't pull her head out of the water? No. Because you know once her head went in that water, she was dead. Because you held it under there until she stopped moving. And now you're sitting in here trying to convince two detectives. She, she fell in the bathtub. The truth there was some extreme violence there. Tell me about that. It was not some calm choking where you're, it's not like the movies where it was a lovingly, hey, I want to die. Let's die quietly. This wasn't a Twilight movie. This is extreme violence. Tell me what happened. What made you so angry? What did she do to make you so angry? Well, before before it happened, I was in the green. I was supposed to kill myself too. But um, I kept refusing to do it. And she was basically saying, you know, talking about how I was nothing to her anyway, and I ruined her life, and you know, it's worth, you know, I was worthless to her. And then, angrily, that's when I did it. Angrily, I went ahead and did it. Tell me I what choked, it is. I choked her. How? I know that, but how? Tell me that. Where, where were you at in the room? Oh, in, in the spot. So. In the spot. Now tell me about the tub. Mm -hmm. In the tub, I was in the same spot, and then, like I said, the tub was full of water. And when she finally, because it was when I choked her, I didn't notice her. I, I noticed her eyes bucked, but I didn't notice all the extra stuff going on. And well, of course you didn't. But you're angry. You're out of you're out of control right now. Would you agree? Yes, sir. Would you agree that you're out of control? Yes, sir. So you're out of control. You're pissed off because she's telling you what again? She told me that I was worthless anyway, and I ruined her life. You're enough. worthless. You ruined her life. She's telling you. I'm not gonna, you might as well die. I was like, I'm, I'm, she's saying that I wasn't even man enough to give her what she wanted as far as... You're not man enough to give her what she wanted? Like, when she's telling you this, is she right up in your face? Yes, sir. Okay. Is that Did that make you get angry and grab her and choke her? Because if that is what happened, you need to tell the truth, man. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, but that's why I was, the reason why she said I wasn't even man enough to do it, to choke her. And when she got in my face, I was just... <coughs> I guess, right, so I guess, I mean, and I just got angry at the same time. And what happened? I, 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 Talk us through it. I choked her as I was choking her in my arms, with my hands. And my arms were probably about like this. And I couldn't tell you how long it was in my mind. It might have been a minute, but it could have been longer because it was just a, a cloudy moment. And when her knees buckled, I just turned her around because she dropped like her, her, her body weight just dropped, and I turned her around. Excuse me. And she fell in the tub, face down in the tub. But I did not. I didn't bang her head. I didn't do none of that. If, she, if the banging happened, it probably it may have been because she hit her face on the tub as she fell in because she was so when he water splash. I'm just making sure I'm, I'm getting it correct what you're saying. So when you're, you're choking her, when she went limp, you turned her around. And then when you turned her around, you just, did you just kind of throw her to the tub in I anger? Her, no, it wasn't anger. I let her fall because we backed up. Like we were standing by oh, wait, the now, now your story's changing a little. No. Because before, story. when you said you were here, if you let her fall, she's not going to fall way over there in that no, tub. We were, so it's changing yeah, a little bit here. Get up. No. Sure? Yeah. I was standing here, we started here, and when we were backing up towards it like this here. While that's you're choking her, she's backing up. up. Yeah, that's, what I was saying. Okay. We, that's what I was trying to tell you, we okay. started here. And we backed up and went like, this is the toilet right here, and it's a tub. 
when she needed to buckle up, I actually fall and I turned her around. Why'd you turn her around? Because I, I didn't want her to, I mean, I was still thinking I didn't want her to hit her head on the, the back because she would have fell back and put Why are you thinking that when you're trying to kill her? I'm, whether she wanted it or whether you wanted it, if you're trying to kill her, would you agree? Yes, sir. Yes? So why would you be concerned about her hitting her head when you're trying to kill her? Why would you Why would you be concerned with her hitting the back of the head then drop her face first into the bathtub? I'll tell you, and let me just say, just common sense. And tell me if I'm wrong. Is your concern so it looked like so it didn't look like somebody murdered her? You're no. putting her in the. But what I'm, but why were you concerned about her hitting her head? Because it was basically like what if what if who is, I was just trying to think. I mean, I don't know. To be honest with you, I have, I have no idea. I, I don't know why I turned her around like that. I guess I just didn't want to look at her. I was afraid to look at her face anymore. Because when I saw her face, her face, it just... Would, would you admit that you committed a murder? I don't think you got to the point of even... of even... of, of remorse. I don't see any remorse here. I mean, and it has nothing to do with emotions. It has to do with fact that you can't admit it. Say it. It's not. Which have you have you committed a murder? Did you kill Jessica? Well, let me let's start there. Did you kill Jessica? Is that a yes or a no? Yes, sir. In the end, Brandon would take the case to trial, and the jury would find him guilty of murder. Brandon was sentenced to life in prison for murdering his wife while her two daughters were asleep in their beds. What are your thoughts on this case? What do you think about a person who attacks someone who is much weaker than they are? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.